Okay, so this is the test of Benelli SBE3 with the speed read and burst fast fire 4. Trying to get it dialed in. You're not that far off, man. That's like just a little bit high, but almost right where it needs to be. Yeah, look at that. It's... I mean, you're like, you're like 70, 30. You're maybe a little bit to the right and a little high. All right, so I think we got Eric's gun all dialed in. Uh, he's gonna take another shot at the uh, cardboard box, and we'll see if it's if it's quite patterned up right. Very well centered up, I think. So now we're gonna throw a couple clays, see if he can hit his clays. I'll shoot a couple clays with that uh, red dot sight, and then we're gonna talk about it a little bit. The differences between my dot and his dot. All right, I'm gonna throw a clay. Eric just crushed his first one. We're just hand throwing them. I don't even have a hand thrower and I didn't want to bust out my big whirly bird. So I'm just gonna hand throw it and see if he can get it. Got it. All right, ready? I tried. There it is. There it is. Are on. Uh, we're using different setups, so let's talk about our setup. Let's go uh, in the shade because it's yeah. literally 9 a.m. and it's 90 degrees. I'll take my hat off. Freaking hot. And it's just that wonderful dry heat here in the deserts of Idaho that um, just suck all the life out of everything. So we're here in the shade because it's hot. Uh, and we're going to talk about our guns for a minute and the differences um, and some of the things with red dot sights in general so we're primarily wing shooters I shoot a little bit of turkey Eric doesn't really shoot turkeys he should shoot turkeys well, it's just like deer hunting walking up and down mountains or whatever and then you only get a turkey instead of a deer so red dot sights are pretty often used in turkey hunting but they're not as often used in uh, wing shooting Eric decided to jump on the uh, red dot bandwagon to see how it worked out for wing shooting. I was honestly pretty skeptical at first, but I spent probably a good eight to 10 hours researching red dots and wing shooting. Read a bunch of forum stuff, read, I don't know, all kinds of stuff on the internet about it. Now, I know for myself, I am, I'm a decent shot, but I shoot with one eye closed all the time when I'm shooting off my regular bead. It's a Same really, here. it's a really bad habit. But uh, it's some, that's how I learned how to do it. That's how I was taught, and so that's how I do it. I wasn't taught correctly growing up, and so I still do it that way. The one thing about the red dot sight is you cannot shoot with one eye closed, and so um, really? you're, not, you're not supposed to. Oh, you? I guess I'm the exception because that's how I didn't even so, know. So what we're going to do later <laughs> is you're going to shoot with both your eyes. So the purpose of this, and this is a good education, I guess, so with the red dot sight, you're supposed to shoot with both eyes open for visual acuity. You actually will shoot better with two eyes open all the time. Why? There is a stigma because you don't lose depth, depth perception. If you, if you close one eye, you lose your depth perception. So there's a stigma surrounding red dot sights. And uh, it's kind of a dumb stigma, I think. It's, it's more of a traditionalist thing, but you know how us millennials are about... Yeah, I'm, I'm not a millennial. <laughs> Traditionalist, yeah, I don't care you what are. Google says. Eighty-seven. If you were born before nineteen ninety-one, <laughs> you're not a millennial. Oh man. Anyway, whatever it is, it's there's a stigma for traditionalists against red dot sights because you don't aim a shotgun, you point a shotgun, you swing a shotgun, that kind of thing. And those are all those are all true facts. But the fact of the matter is, is that the red dot does not prevent you from swinging or pointing a shotgun. And I think on the ethical, I think on the ethical side of this, if you're wing shooting, do we not owe it to the animals to be more accurate? I mean, if it's going to increase my accuracy and Eric's accuracy, we're both decent shots. We shoot ducks all the time, like all all winter we shoot ducks. We, but uh, if it can make us a little bit more accurate, so that we can perform cleaner kills, then I think that that's something worth looking into in general. If you have the the ability to do so, if you don't want to use a red dot sight, great, that's fine. We're going to try it out and see how it works this season. So we'll look at Eric's red dot sight and uh, we'll look at mine. So he has the Burris Fast Fire 4 on a speed bead mount. And I've got a Vortex Venom 3 MOA 
on a Meadow Creek mount, that's a rib mount style, um, which will what most people will be able to use because the speed bead doesn't come on most shotgun models, it comes on a few, and they're not really making it for the newer models anymore. So we'll take a look at that and uh, we'll look at Eric's first. So this is the speed bead, this is the bracket right here. It goes between the receiver and the stock. Which so is this is the bracket, this is the red reticle right here. So this one, the Burst Fast Fire 4 comes with this protective cover, whereas the Fast Fire 3 was more of a slip-on canopy type thing. Mm -hmm. And that's why I went with the 4 because there was a lot of reviews of people actually losing that cover while they were walking out and hunting, whether it was turkey hunting or duck hunting. And yeah. I wasn't quite sure on if a 3MOA would be big enough, but I also wasn't sure if an 11 or an 8 would be too big. Um, so this one has the option of going from a 3 to 11. Both look really well. Um, and has, Cody's is a 3 MOA and his is actually further up the gun. And it's still, you could see it very, very clearly. Yeah. So for shotgun hunting, uh, a 3 MOA, is, unless you, your, unless your you vision, have poor eyesight. Unless your eyesight's a little bit poor, 3 MOA is going to be good for you. Yeah, so this Burris Fast Fire 4, this is their their highest line of the red dot side that they make they make a fast fire three and i think you can even still buy the fast fire twos yeah um so this bad boy has it goes from three to eleven and then it has different reticle patterns the cool thing about the fast fire which i think has an, an advantage over the meadow creek mounts is that it's right here next to your face like you can see from there but your window that you're looking through, you're basically looking all through just the sight. Yep. So your sight plane down your barrel is all through that sight. And the cool thing about the red dots is it's like it projects a red dot into the air where your target is, right? So it looks like there's a red dot out there floating in front of your clay or your duck or whatever it is. The downfall to the Burris speed bead is one, they're pretty spendy. These speed beads are pretty spendy. Two, they don't make them for all the models. Like his gun, they don't make it, so he had to modify it. My gun, that they they don't make it. They don't make it for the SX4. Um, they have a list on their website of the ones that they do make it for, but they're not making them like they were. And those guns have been out long enough that you would yeah. think that they would have already when I started producing the SBE3. It had already been out for I believe a year. And right. I actually emailed Burris. And they said they had no plans on making a speed bead right. mount for the SBE3. So I actually, because I was hoping to get a speed bead, um, but was unable to, I contacted Burris about it to see if the Maxxis speed bead would fit on the Maxxis 2. And they actually told me that they don't, they're not compatible, and I should get a Metal Creek mount. This is the Metal Creek mount. So you can see the difference here where Eric's mounts here which gives him a bigger, op more open shot plane with it, where mine mounts here. It's not a huge difference in length. It looks like a huge difference, but it's really not. And when you pull it up to your face, you're looking down the barrel, but you have to be a little bit higher. If the battery were to die on this, then you wouldn't really be able to use your bead. You'd have to take your mount off. So this is the Vortex Venom, and this is a 3MOA. Um, the cool thing about this is mine doesn't have a slip cover, like the, the dust cover like his does. And I think his has a top battery load too. Yep. So if you're gonna buy one, you wanna make sure that you can put the battery in the top. Because if you have to put it in the bottom, you're gonna have to re-zero your gun every time you change your battery. If it's a top load one, you will not have to re-zero your gun to put in a new battery, right? So that's kind of important. Um, with all things, when you add electronics, that means that you have to carry extra batteries, right? That's kind of the downfall of that. Um, but I think that that's a pretty simple trade-off. I think between the two, mine only comes in a 3 MOA, so that's a small dot. It doesn't have any other options, but it is quite a bit cheaper. I'd sell mine was 250 with the mount and the sight on Meadow Creek mounts, and his was like 400 something bucks for his mount and his sight. So there's definitely a significant difference in price. I mean, his is definitely fancier. When I look down his sight, I like having a little bit bigger reticle or just the option of having it. My eyes are really good, so I don't I don't wear contacts, I don't wear glasses. And so the 3 MOA is fine for me, I can see it great. Um, this also has, and just like Eric's, it has adjustable brightness. So you can adjust the brightness up and down while you're out there. And it's just a really good solid sight. 
I think the important thing is, is if you're gonna do this, one, make sure that you're a good shot before you put on a red dot sight because if you don't know how to shoot a shotgun, um, it's gonna cripple you a little bit. You're gonna yep. get handicapped. And learn how to shoot your gun proficiently. Secondly, get a sight that comes from a really reputable brand that has a really, really good warranties, right? Duck hunters are really tough on their stuff. And I've had comments on my SX4 review video about how hard I am on my gun or whatever crap people, you know, I don't know, internet stuff. Anyway, um, <laughs> dude, if they only knew, man. Yeah, if they knew. So there's a difference between public land duck hunting and private yeah. land, that's for sure. So duck hunting is rough on your stuff. So get a site that has really good warranties. Burris and Vortex both have unlimited, like no questions asked warranty, except for in the case of loss or theft. Right? They won't replace it if you lose it, and they won't replace it if it's stolen. But say that I bust the, the glass on this or I freaking tweak the metal or whatever it is, I can get a hold of Vortex and they will just send me a new one. And the same goes for Burris. Don't go on Amazon and buy a cheap red dot site, okay? If you're going to do it, you need to get a higher quality red dot site because one, they have to hold zero and most of those cheap ones, they're not going to be able to hold zero on a 12 gauge shotgun shell. They're just not, especially when you're shooting three inch high brass two shot, you know what I mean? Or whatever it is you shoot. They are not gonna be able to handle that. Ultimately, what sight you choose and how you choose to mount it is up to you. If your gun is compatible with the speed bead, I think the speed bead is the better mount. If it's not, this mount is pretty freaking sweet. And that thing is solid on there. Like it is not coming off until I want it to come off. It doesn't slip, it doesn't slide. Uh, the guy at Metal Creek, I, I believe his name is Paul. Sorry if your name isn't Paul, man. He, he designed these really, really well comes with different shims so that it fits depending on what your rib width is and I would definitely look into that. If you're not afraid of breaking tradition and you're okay with people thinking less of you I guess for using a red dot site and have been looking into it, go ahead and subscribe to my channel because we're going to be using these. I've got one, Eric's got one, and my dad has one that we put on his shotgun because his eyesight's getting poor. Check out our channel, subscribe, and watch our videos because we're going to be talking about this as we shoot ducks this year and to see if this is really worth using or not using. The good thing is both of our sights, if they're not really good for shotguns, I can just put it on my Glock. Right? And I have an FN 5.7 it will be going on. I don't think it's gonna be an issue and I think it's gonna be something that works really well for us. But if I can hand throw a clay and hit it out of the air at 35, 40 yards, then I think we're okay on, on smashing mallards, right? Thanks for watching, I hope this is informative. Um, and gives you a little bit of uh, insight. Yeah, it gives you a little bit of insight into uh, red dot sights and whether they're worth it for wing shooting. And we're still in the trial period, but I think I think it's going to turn out good. And thanks again. Ring that bell.